Hello everyone, Professor Philip Travis here, and this week in World History Part 2, we're going to examine the First World War, which was at the time known as the Great War. And we're going to examine some of the causes of this conflict, causes like nationalism and imperialism, right? The First World War largely began in the, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which was a large... Uh, Central and Southeastern European Empire that had really been the dominant political force in Europe during the 1800s. By the beginning of the 1900s, there had been nationalist movements within that empire pressing for their independence. Uh, many of them. It was a large, large, and you'll see in the lectures this week, maps. It was a large um, continental empire that is today, um, that former empire is today comprises... Uh, a number of different smaller independent states. But the most particular nationalist group was, of course, the Serbians. And Serbian nationalists um, um, would ultimately um, conduct uh, the assassination in the city of Sarajevo, which is today in the country of Bosnia um, in southeastern Europe part of the former country of Yugoslavia, the assassination in Sarajevo of the Austrian heir to the throne, Franz Ferdinand, and his wife, his wife Sophie. And that event is largely associated with being the initial catalyst to uh, the First World War, though uh, there were other factors, particularly um, the encouragement of Germany uh, for Austria-Hungary to go to war and the desire of figures in Germany to kind of use that war, particularly Kaiser Wilhelm um, and um, his, his sort of high military command, individuals like von Moltke, who wanted to use war as a way to expand Germany's growing power um, in Europe at the time. So we're going to look at the First World War. We're going to look at some of the issues causing it, nationalism and imperialism. Then we're going to look at the ramifications of the First World War to sort of the 20th century world. It very much redraws the political map. It also, because of the Treaty of Versailles, um, helped to set the stage for the emergence of fascism in places like Germany um, as well, which then has long-reaching ramifications for the development of the Second World War. Our reading this week um, is chapter 28 on the First World War and these larger issues. Um, our, our, our assignment this week, we don't have a discussion forum this week, and that is because our assignment this week, uh, we have a, a major essay this week. And this essay assignment is two pages, and the idea with this is two pages double-spaced in font 12 times New Roman. Okay. And there should not be a big header or anything. It should be truly two pages of text written in paragraph form with an introduction, a body section, and a conclusion. Establish a clear thesis in the introduction and then defend it in a couple of body paragraphs in the paper. For this paper, you just need to use your textbook, okay? Um, cite the textbook. And I've provided for you a citation example. I want it cited in footnotes. Okay, and I provided you with a citation example um, in the prompt for the paper. So just use footnotes uh, as I have it demonstrated in the paper. That's a Chicago style footnote and then have the page number there. And you can use other sources, but I really want to see you relying on your textbook. This is what the paper is about for this class. I want you to world history. Let me back up a bit. World history, the, the sort of discipline of world history, is about, um, it's about um, studying change in the world drawn largely from global connections, okay? So world history looks at the world. It looks at glo the globe uh, of human populations, if you will. But it also is interested particularly in how interactions and interconnections between different societies, different places, and different people shape world historical change, shape change in the world, okay? So I want you to, to locate within the subject matter of this course, I want you to look at um, an example of change and write a, a paper about how interconnections created lasting change. So select one element 
that we have discussed or will discuss in the class. So the Columbian Exchange is a perfect example of how global interconnections prompt historical change. The Black Death is an example of how global interconnections spur world change. Uh, change in, 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 in world world historical change, shall we say. Here you see the photo you see here is actually a photo of a makeshift hospital of American soldiers during the flu pandemic at the end of World War I. And uh, this pandemic, of course, was brought about because of global interconnections during the First World War. That flu probably started in Kansas and was taken by American soldiers over to Europe where it spread across continents, spread around the world, and uh, remains to this day the most deadly uh, global pandemic since the Black Death at the end of the late Middle Ages. So I want your paper to be about global interconnectivity. This term that world historians use um, to understand change on a global level, large-scale change, by examining the interconnections of people in the world. I want you to select one specific element related to this and write a two-page essay that explains how that specific element represented world historical sort of interconnections, global interconnectivity, and how that created lasting change in the world. World War I and the flu pandemic is an example of that. The Black Death would be an example of that. The Columbian Exchange would be an example of that. Now, if you choose something like the Columbian Exchange, don't write papers that just generally summarize. Choose something specific. So with the Columbian Exchange, you could talk about the effect that global interconnections had when it came to the exchange of food items like the potato, which came from the Americas but transformed the, um, uh, 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 the food and, uh, and health and nutrition of those in Western Europe and then led to population growth, right? You could look at technologies that were a product of of, of global interconnections, gunpowder weapons coming from China through the Islamic empires, coming up to Europe. That's a perfect example of global interconnections driving change in the world. So I want you to write a paper that examines global connections, global co interconnectivity, and explain how that particular case of global interconnectivity drove change in the world and be specific about why that change matters. So that's your assignment this week, is this two-page essay. Make sure, again, you cite it with footnotes and just see the prompt um, in our um, information for this week. And of course, um, I'll have some examples of subjects you might write on. And of course, you'll have my lectures in there this week as well. The photo, no, the photo, the factoid for this week post in the extra credit discussion forum is related to that image. And the factoid is this, and just put this in the extra credit discussion board for your bonus point. Uh, the factoid is this, um, the Spanish flu, which ravaged the world at the end of the First World War, the, the Spanish flu, an example of global interconnectivity, world historical change driven by the interconnections of people, the Spanish flu actually killed nearly a million Americans in roughly one year. And at the time, that was more Americans that had died in any foreign war combined up to that point. So the Spanish flu killed nearly a million Americans in roughly one year at the end of the First World War. Let's have a great week. And please let me know if you have any questions.